Hello and welcome to the next video in this CraftCMS tutorial series. In this video, we're going to add template caching to this website. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is add this toolbar down to the bottom so we can see some stats about each page. So how you do that is you go into your settings here, click on the icon in the top right, go to your username here and click on preferences and just check this box here, show the debug toolbar on the front end. That's how I got this to appear here. And this will tell you if you have any deprecation errors on this page, um, a bunch of other stuff. But the important thing that we're looking at here is the number of database queries it took to render this page. Uh, also, the time it took to render this page is important too. So if you think about the home page, we have all this content coming from different places. We have this hero content, this title of the background. We have the featured story and the images for that, the content here. And then we have this matrix field and this rich text content and the footer and the header as well. So we have a bunch of different bits of content that all need to be fetched from the database and brought in order to render the page. So that's why we have 59 database queries, but we can reduce that by caching different parts of the template so that they don't have to be fetched from the database. They can just be retrieved from cache. So let's start by taking a look at the homepage template. So you don't ever want to just cache the entire website. So in the index.twig file here, you could wrap the entire base template here in a cache tag, um, but that's not the approach to take because that can cause a lot of different problems. The proper approach is to cache specific pieces of each template and be a little bit um, careful about what things you're wrapping in the cache tag because it can cause some problems. For example, if I were to cache the navigation based on how I'm doing the navigation right now, where we have the active states, if I cache the navigation and I went to this page first, every other page I went to would have this lit up saying that we're on the hour gear page, even though we aren't because the HTML for the navigation is cached. So there's certain things you don't want to cache. There's certain things you want to cache separately from other things. So just be careful with it. But let's start with the homepage and I'll show you how I'd go about it. So within the block content tag is where we are going to do most of our caching. So here we have the hero, we have the featured story, and we have the meet the writer section. So these are just specific to the homepage. They can all be cached. So that's great. So let's add a cache tag here. So we'll say cache using key homepage. You don't have to say using key, you could just say cache. Um, but this is a little more specific. And when you're debugging, I found that this is helpful to give it a name. So let's just wrap everything in this cache tag and cache at the end. And let's go ahead and refresh the home page and see if we can reduce this. So the first refresh will reduce it by some, but I noticed it takes a few loads of the page to fully cache everything sometimes. So let's refresh once, twice, down to 34. Okay, we've gone from 59 database queries down to 34. So that's a great improvement. And we've also cut about 200 milliseconds or so off the time it takes to load the page. So there are some, you know, there are always gonna have to be some database queries. Uh, you're not gonna get this down to zero because for example, just loading things from cache sometimes can cause a database query. Um, but we also have the header in here still, we have the footer in here. So there's still a few things. Let me hide this for a sec, the footer here. So there's still a few things that are causing queries here, but that is a great improvement so far for the home page. And so let's go to the next page, the story listing page. So this currently uses 44 database queries and 322 milliseconds, 300, 280, 293. So about 300 milliseconds on average. So let's go ahead and add caching to this page. So go to stories, index.twig, and do the same exact thing. Cache using key, and we'll call this stories listing page. And we'll just wrap everything in this cache tag, everything within the block tag, content block. And let's save this and refresh. 44 database down to 34 again, perfect. 
And this is on average lowered by maybe none at all. <laughs> maybe 10, 20 uh, milliseconds. Okay, great. So let's go to a story detail page. And we only have to do this once because we just have one template for all of the story detail pages. So this is using, let's see here, 44 database queries. So we'll go into entry.twig under stories here and do the same thing. Story detail page. And cache. And let's reload. Great. So we took it down to 36. And let's go to, and that should be for all of the stories, right? So if we go to the next one, it won't be cached at first. But now that we've visited it, it is now cached. And if we go to the last story, the first one, it has to actually load it from the database, but then subsequent visits will show you that it is loading less from the database because it's cached. So let's go to our gear, which is a general page. 41 database queries. Let's go to the general page template here and do the same thing. General page and cache. And we'll check this out. 41 down to 34. And the final page we had was this Fujifilm one. And this is broken, probably because it doesn't exist anymore, or actually I pulled it out. Let's go back to general pages. Yeah, I pulled it out from under, it had been inset under our gear. So now that I put it back there, it will work. There we go. So down to 34 database queries. All right, the last thing we'll cache here is the footer at the bottom of the page. And because this is the same content on every page of the website, we don't have to do an individual cache for each page it appears on. We can do one global cache for the footer. So let me show you how to do that. Let's go to the index.twig template where the footer lives down here at the bottom. And let's wrap it in a cache tag cache. So we want to cache it globally because it's not specific to this URL. If you don't specify globally, it will cache it based on the key you used, but also the URL you're currently on or the URL the page appeared on. So we'll say cache globally using key footer. And cache. Now it only has one field here, the rich text field. So it won't reduce it by much, but let's take a look. So here we have 34 database queries and let's refresh. All right, so we knocked it down by two. So that's still an improvement, which is great. And one final note on caching is don't ever cache just plain HTML. For example, this here is HTML. It's not doing any queries. It's not loading any kind of content. It's just HTML. So this can just be rendered by the browser. But if you go ahead and cache it, it has to be fetched from the cache before it can be rendered by the browser. So that's inefficient. So don't ever cache plain HTML. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.